welcome back to Gimbel's Tip of the Week. You know the hardest part of making changes in your law practice is avoiding the inevitable slide back into the old ways. So today, we're wrapping up our review of the Practice Accelerator Framework with five tips for making your process improvements stick. The final stage of the Practice Accelerator Framework is all about follow-up. You're answering the question, are we following our new process and is it actually working? It may seem like you've done all the hard work already, but your project isn't over yet. In fact, you're about to embark on what may be the hardest phase, control. I'm Karen Dunskinner. I'm a lawyer and a Lean Six Sigma black belt. I'm also a global advisor on legal process improvement to the International Institute of Legal Project Management. At Gimbal, we help lawyers and others in the legal profession build more productive and profitable practices, and we do it using the Practice Accelerator Framework. Across the life of your project, You'll have changed the way people work, and you'll have improved your outcomes, and that's fantastic. But when the initial excitement fades, people often lose interest, and they slide back into their old ways. You need to ensure that your improvements continue to be implemented so that you continue to reap the benefits for months and years to come. So here are a few tips to make it easier. First, you need to diligently track a metric that demonstrates improvement over your baseline. To do this, you need to have established that baseline really clearly during the measure phase. Then, you need to regularly compare your current performance against that baseline. Get the data. Don't rely on anecdotes. This one is going to take constant vigilance, but it will pay off. Second, you're going to communicate your new process and your improved performance. Ensure that people know why they need to follow the new policy, how it fits with your firm's overall strategy, and how they'll personally benefit. You need to socialize the new process and make sure everyone understands what's in it for them. Number three is you need to give people the right training. You need to ensure that everyone knows how to follow the new policy. Create clear maps and practice guides for your new process. Provide training. If your new process or your system is complex, introduce just a few new skills at a time and then add new training in new skills as your team progresses. And make sure everyone, even busy partners, knows that training is not optional. Number four is you have to reward compliance. As you create your new process, consider ways that you can make it easier for people to comply and then build in incentives that will reward their compliance. Rewards can be small and intangible. You could even try setting up a leaderboard and get people to demonstrate their compliance. A little competition can go a long way. Finally, you're gonna to wanna to change people's beliefs. That's number five. Most importantly, people need to believe, they need to really believe that the new way is easier, faster, and better for them. One of the best webinars I've seen on this aspect of change comes from Jamie Flinchbaugh, and I'll put a link to it down in the notes below. I highly recommend that you watch it. Making your changes stick is probably the most challenging part of process improvement. But by thinking about how you're gonna do that while you're designing your new process, by building aspects of control right into your new system, you can improve your chances of success. And that's it, folks. Don't forget to join me this afternoon for Virtual Coffee House. There's a link to register down below. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you next week. Oh, before I go, did you manage to get your free eight ways guide last week? You can download it now. It will definitely help you cut costs and increase revenue in your practice. Thanks a lot.